where are you? And I'm so sorry. I cannot sleep. I cannot dream tonight. I need somebody always. The sick, strange darkness comes creeping on, so haunting every time. Haunting every time. Don't waste your time on me. You're already. No? I have this very beautiful 370Z. I really like the color. This is Nevada, but you came from San Diego. Uh, my Uber is here, Uber Foods, just notified me. So, <clears throat> he's here, I think this is a 18, 2018 automatic, 370Z. Again, very, very clean. It's getting some three inch intakes installed, different brands. Um, they're actually like, it looks like they're like 2.85, something like that. It's not full three inch, but still, it's obviously better than stock. It's almost full three inch. Ray's gonna install the intakes here. So they're obviously they're gonna be better than the stock intakes. Yes, of course. Oh, I saw. I heard that you hit your head right in the corner. <laughs> I wonder if you can hear it in the video. <laughs> Maybe you'll grow some brain cells back. I lost all of them. Uh, uh, let me get my food. All right. So a long time ago, I said that I was gonna try and make a video about the process of loading this, the dyno on there, the hub dyno. <clears throat> so. First, obviously, you remove the wheel. So, take off the lug nuts. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so the wheel is off. Next, we're gonna put the hub adapter on here. All right, this is the uh, adapter. It's pretty heavy. A lot of you guys just see me grab it with one hand, but when I have you guys do it, cause you guys just wanna try it out, or when you guys actually just wanna help me, or when you're pretty close to me and um, you just load it up yourself so I don't have to, you realize that this is actually pretty heavy. I just make it look easy. So this goes right here. This washer right here, it has to be in there. And then you just put one lug nut in there, but not all the way, maybe like halfway, because you're gonna need to have play to move this around because we need to add the rest of the washers on there. All right, then you're just gonna tighten them. Why am I even doing this video? Let's make sure. You see, it only goes one way. There's like a slit right there. Slit. And then you can obviously you're gonna have all, all five lug nuts on there with the washers, those little spacers right there. And then we're gonna put this in there. There's a a gear in there. And then you lock it, and that's it. Then that's it right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. All right, so the wheel is off. And next is the adapter. All right, the adapter is on. All right, let's put this in the hole. Oh, wrong hole. Perfect, this one was actually very, very easy. I'm glad it was easy. Sometimes it takes a little longer due to suspension that's been worn down and it's uneven. So when that happens, the adapter does not go in the hole. So you just gotta play with the height adjustment, lower the car or lift it up depending what you need to do. This is a 2018, so it's still considered a newer car, low miles, so suspension is still good. Those are usually the ones where it goes in pretty easy. Uh, sometimes you guys have an aftermarket suspension and of course once it's newer, if you, um, 
and align it correctly or adjust it correctly, the height evenly, then it goes in pretty easy. If not, then we just gotta play with that. Since this one has three inch intakes, I need to put a tune on here to get it to idle better. Sorry, bro, I gotta move your seat back. It was too forward for me. All right, and I am flashing the ECU. Again, it's on three inch intakes. It has a dual exhaust. It's on stock injector, so 91 fuel, 41,000 miles. Car's very, very clean. I really like the color. All right, we are at 298 wheel horsepower. Uh, start. Engine. Why don't you use the uprip lock so we can see it right Because away. Jesse has it. The lock came from him. Yeah. He has a... Uh, I already replaced it. So I'm just going to delete it. Uh, Alright guys, I have this 2015 Q50 all-wheel drive. It has stock intakes. has full exhaust. Dual exit. Okay, never mind. It has single exit ISR exhaust. I am currently flashing the ECU. I just made uh, the tune file for him. The baseline. 272 horsepower and 242 torque. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Turn ignition off. I guess I will. You know which beepy noise is annoying and I think a lot of you will agree and even if you own those type of cards, the the cars, the Ford. Dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun. All right, says to put the ignition back on, but uh, I don't do what I'm told, so I actually waited a couple seconds. So I did it because I wanted to, not because it told me to. I hope the car starts. All right, tune's done. Q50 all wheel drive, baseline was 272. After the tune 287, gain 15 wheel horsepower. There is the torque right there. So, this one on our dyno, this is about right. Um, normally, this is slightly lower. Normally, they'll make 290, 291, 92, 93, with the mods it has, which this one only has exhaust, has stock intakes. So it all really varies on the baseline and obviously during tuning you can tell the motor is going to be good or not. I have had some Q50s hit 298, 300, 301 with the exact same mods as this one, the ISR exhaust um, and the stock intakes. So it just really varies on the condition of your motor and other small little things. But that's it for this one. Obviously, he's going to feel a big difference. 15 wheel horsepower at the peak. And then in the middle. In the middle, looks like we have another 15 or 20 gains right there. So definitely a big, big difference. This one definitely needed a tune. You can see over here where it used to drop. What is that? Uh, slightly below 7,000. Well, at 7,000 as well. Probably 6800 where it started, 67, and now it's just nice and smooth up top. Let's see, let's see what he's doing. Probably nothing, probably just killing time. Hello. I'm gonna tell George that you're still on the clock and you're singing.
guys, I have this 2008 350Z, currently tuned by somebody else in Texas. Came in to get it tuned on their dyno day over the weekend. And uh, I had actually tuned this car before, but he wanted to try something else. So he went somewhere else and now he loses to a DE that I tuned. <laughs> yeah, but they're, they're friends, so um, they basically tell me everything. And he's gonna go boost, but before he goes boost, he wants me to retune it NA because he just says it doesn't run good with the other tune from the 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 tune. So here he is again with me. And the interesting thing is, this car I have posted it before on my YouTube, or I talked about it. Uh, this car used to be white, and this is the car on how I met George. So this car has been through a few owners, and these are the real miles on it. Because when I tuned it, I believe it only had about 25,000 miles. So I tuned this car a long, long time ago. And uh, this is how I met George. And I believe in the video, it's like one of my first videos. And I had said that I wanted to make a video on how, how uh, me and George met. And it had to do with this car because this was George's customer's car where uh, he sold on the parts. All right, guys, uh, another issue. He says he has some startup issues on it. But to be honest, uh, aside from him complaining about the other tuner's tune, I honestly believe that's not anything to do with their tune in this specific car. I believe that's something to do with maybe an install or something. And he said that some of the parts were installed uh, here um, at some, some place that it's a shop, but it's not a shop, I guess. I don't know. They don't have the proper licensing for it or something. So I believe it has to do with the install of certain parts. I'm pretty sure, I'm gonna say I'm pretty sure that has nothing to do with that tuner's tune for the startup issues. Cause I already kinda, he showed me a video and the way he explained it, it, it doesn't make sense to say it's the tune on that one. So let's do a baseline pull. Uh, all the parts are the same, nothing's changed. So we can actually do an exact before and after comparison. because it's running like crap so you can see the the red line right there just the with the yellow one it's all like squiggly it's not good and I was looking at the log obviously during the pull and it's extremely bad um, and then these lines right here where you see above is when I had tuned the car on 91 right now it's on 85 so on 91 it had it had made more power and everything was just way better so it's not good at all I'm gonna tell him this tune is not not good. Oh, missing Tome. Jesse. Yeah. It's in my pants. All right, and I just showed him the graph, the dyno graph, which is horrible. And look at this right here. Air fuel, full throttle from the other tuner. It's no good. I had to let off early. I think it's gonna blow up. Timing. The fuel is wrong, you know, supposedly they say they have a strategy where they run richer and less timing. This is the total opposite. So, and um, they told me it made, obviously you guys know every dyno is different. So uh, this dyno is a little lower, but this is not the calculations, the percentage where, uh, how do I say this? Um... Supposedly made three, three. I'm not too sure. Either 308 or 311 over there, some, somewhere around there. Uh, I let off at 265. That's 6,000. So almost a red line. But let's just assume maybe it was gonna make like 275. But just the lines all wiggly and and not good. I'm not gonna take it a red line when I know that it could potentially just blow up on their tune. Uh, even if it made 275, that is not the equivalent of 300 or 310. Let's just say average it out to 310. That's not. The difference between that dyno they used and this one so obviously somebody lied to him about the dyno numbers or something else I obviously I don't have all the info but the the owner himself helped me load it on the dyno here and I went straight in there I didn't upload anything just in instant did a pull on his tune and this explains why the D that I tuned they're neck and neck neck and neck when they race 
So he made more power on 91 with my tune, which is the, all the lines on top. So hopefully the motor is still good, because uh, this guy plans to go boost. So uh, I guess I gotta start tuning it. But that's why he came back to me. He knew he knew something something was wrong. But you know that's that's what happens. You you hear things you don't want to believe it. You believe like the wrong type of hype and things like that. But anyways, I'm just gonna continue on with the tune. Just in case you guys think the sensors don't work. Here we go. The sensor is reading different, way different values right there. Guys, okay, so I just showed him this. He's very happy. Obviously, the tune's not done, but my tuning is the green line, and this—that's the first pull. So I'm gonna try and get more. It looks like there is room for more. How much more? I don't know, but yeah, that's a big difference right there. Let's do a second pull on my tune. We have this uh, mid mount kit, turbo kit. I am putting a startup file for it because he changed the injectors. All right, guys, I have this 2008 350Z six speed, it has a mid mount kit. It is doing about this one is on 11 pounds. The tune is almost complete. Uh, very, very minor issues, which is actually really good news. Uh, it was just like uh, clamps, and uh, the wastegate was actually stuck, but we we're able to fix that. That like, both wastegates were stuck. Everything was just fixed like extremely, extremely quickly. Uh, everything was installed here. The customer purchased everything on his own, and everything was installed here. So it, it always works out better like that. So if there's any issues, you know, it gets fixed here because they installed it here. If you install it yourself, well, you have to pull it off the dyno, you know, assuming it's something that you can't fix quickly, you have to pull it off the dyno and take it home and fix it and schedule again and pay again. So it has its advantages getting it installed here at our shop. This car right here with the mid mount it is on e85 uh, it has the stock fuel system just has the uh, bigger injectors this one has a dual tome so let me go back there and show you guys pretty sick So this one here, I told you guys has a stock fuel system. It does. It has a pressure regulator, 
but it has a kit that is basically useless. I don't even know why they sell it. I believe it's like their stage one or something. It doesn't, doesn't even do anything. It's a waste of money, to be honest. Yeah, pretty good for, for a little boost. Uh, this is how the owner wanted it, and hopefully soon he'll get a fuel system and build a motor. Obviously, that's that's pretty good amount of money. Also, on this one here, um, the owner had purchased a, a different mid-mount kit from somebody here locally in the IE, in the Inland Empire. I'm not too sure how long he waited. I'd have to ask him again because he told me this, I believe, in February here in person. It was January or February. He still hasn't received all the parts for that turbo kit. So it's like, well, how, how's the car boosted? Well, he bought a, a boosted performance kit. He bought a BP kit and he got it basically really, really fast. And now it's installed. I don't know is if as of the time of this video, he's received everything because I haven't talked to him um, a little bit before he dropped off the car. So, I don't know if he actually received everything from the first kit, but I think he's still waiting for it. So he's gonna have two kits, so he might most likely be selling the first kit. I told him that I would definitely tune the, the kit from the, the shop here locally. And I'll, honestly, I was pretty excited to tune it because uh, this, I believe this was the second type of uh, setup that they offer for VQs, a, a mid-mount kit. I believe it was like their first time offering it. So I actually wanted to tune in. I feel like it, it does work, but it sucks for the owner that they're just lagging on the parts. And I heard that they're not the first ones and they heard the same thing. And I believe he's had other people tell him the same thing. So I'm not too sure what's going on with this other place, why they're not fulfilling the customer orders. It doesn't take that long. Uh, I saw someone say that, oh, it could take a long time. It's a build like, no, like they're just parts. They're not. The only moving part is the turbo and you don't make the turbo it comes from someone else so what really is there to wait on if all these other kits are available from from other people it doesn't it doesn't take too long it's understandable if something's on back order you know maybe like materials are, are low because i do believe they they make it themselves you know obviously not the turbo uh, there's a lot of companies that they don't make the turbo, obviously. They get it from other companies. That's normal. They just make the piping, and they probably get your intercooler kit from somebody else, or maybe they make it themselves. It depends on the company that sells it to you. Some of them make everything themselves, including the turbos. Some of them is just pieced together. Not a problem as long as it works. I've tuned all sorts of different turbo setups with different parts, and we make it work. But when you're getting consistent people telling you hey like these people are taking too long well blah, blah, blah. you know that that's a problem that that's not good for the customer you're going to lose customers clientele because then it's going to get known that you take forever so just you know you use their money work on their stuff if you're using their money to buy the material you know don't use it to fund something else use it to get your customers parts in and out so i still hope that um one day i, I get from, I'm just not going to say their, their name because there, there's no point in saying their name, but just someone locally here. Uh, I do hope to t tune their uh, mid-mount kit because I definitely know it's going to work. It, it is, and uh, I want to tune it, but they're, the cars are not coming out because the parts aren't being sent out. So I don't know there's something more to it, to the story that we're not supposed to know or, or something, but it sucks for you as a customer that the company you're buying parts from, they're not sending them to you. And it's been, some people have been waiting six months. Um, I saw, I read a post where I believe it was like eight months. He had like half of the parts or 80% of the parts, something like that. He was still missing something. I don't know. There's a lot of drama on it, unfortunately, but it doesn't, it doesn't take that long. Like now this one, Ray, Harry Potter, he wired up all the gauges. Pretty good job. Excellent job on the gauges, Ray. Here's the inside right here. Ah, UPT intakes. Hmm, they're not in the trash can. Oh, my keyboard. Oh. This one, Speedy Cory, Speedy Cory 6, his Instagram name. Uh, I saw him earlier. I think he was wearing like a aqua green shirt or something like that. Uh, Jesse pulled out the motor, was showing him everything uh, from this one. Again, I, I didn't tune it. He went to a different tuner. 
and everything seemed fine, just the head gasket. And uh, <laughs> I was interviewing him, and he was doing the same thing that I told him not to do when he wanted to tune with me, but he couldn't. He could just couldn't wait, and he was doing pulls on this motor, and he was doing pulls on this motor that was not tuned for boost for that setup. So he Corey was explaining to me that he was doing a bunch of pulls again and this one the tune was i believe almost complete with his tuner but he was still doing a bunch of pulls like back to back to back so i explained to, he explained everything to me and then i i told him what causes the problem and it obviously it all makes sense so now he's gonna well he's gonna listen to me supposedly when he switches back to me uh, i believe he's gonna change his turbo setup so there's nothing wrong with his turbo kit mechanically or anything everything works fine i believe he's gonna put it up for sale and he's going to get a different kit a different turbo kit on this one so luckily on this one it was only the the head gasket and uh, i was looking at the data logs from his other tuner um they seem pretty good so i did notice on there though some certain things that actually it doesn't have anything to do with tuning uh certain um, parameters luckily were logged and i could see that they were causing problems uh, i'm not going to go into detail but those actually do not have anything to do with his other tuner it's just um something that he needs to look out for because of the design of this turbo right here so now that he's going to switch over to a different style uh, most likely he's going to go mid mount so probably like a boosted performance kit or maybe i'll just tell him to get the the kit from this guy <laughs> Or he could contact the, the other shop here in the IE. Maybe they'll give it to him sooner or something. So that way I could tune that one. Because I, I know for sure that one's going to work. So definitely want to tune that one to uh, show that it works. But yeah, he was telling me like the cars he was racing. And like he, he wasn't too happy, you know. So then he was watching me tune this one. That should do it for this part of the video. I'm going to unload that car right there. And then I'm going to contact him. I'm pretty sure. Well, actually, no. I'm pretty sure he has not seen my stories. Because every time if you guys do like a drop off, you're not here. And I tune the car. And you see it on my story. You guys always like message me and reply to it. Well, you can't reply to it because I have the replies off. But usually you guys will like message me. And just, you know, ask about your car. How much you made. And when can they come pay and pick it up. Bro, I just, I just tuned this car. He's here to fill up.